Hello and welcome back to my hardware review of the brand new QGD1602P. It's the latest generation to arrive in the Guardian series of combination NAS and switch devices from the guys at QNAP. Now for those of you that remember towards the closing stages of last year, you'll know that I got real, real excited about this new range of devices and with good reason. They are a combination managed switch, not any old managed switch, but a business class layer two managed switch combined in a single chassis with a network attached storage device, both of which with their own independent running, running parallels, you can power one down or the other, and at the same time with their own operating systems, their own software and utilities, and their own means of installing virtual machine upgrades and ultimately giving you an incredibly powerful solution in a single box. Now this is the kind of that, that logic taken in a slightly different direction. The previous generation, I say previous, they're still very current, the pair of them, a 1600p with an HDMI GPU equipped NAS that seemed to lean more into the NAS than it did to the Switch. This is a revisiting of that, but this time leaning more towards the Switch. Although it does have uh, differences in the NAS side of things, it has to be said that this is slightly more Switch than it is NAS. Let me explain. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this device. We're gonna look at what it can do, some of the things it can't do, and ultimately help you decide whether this should be your next NAS and or Switch purchase. Arriving, and let's get ready for it, uh, about 900 quid without the tax. It is not a low price. In fact, it arrives in several different combinations of CPU and memory, meaning that it actually goes up to as high as 1500 quid. That's quite a lot of money. So let's find out if that is the sort of money that this is worth. So. Let's start off with the NAS side of things. Now the NAS arrives with two different CPUs based on your budget. The first one is an Intel CPU and Atom, the C3558, and that processor is a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz CPU, and that is on the NAS side of things on this side here. Alternatively, there is the eight core CPU, you heard me right, an eight core CPU in the 3758, another 2.2 gigahertz, same architecture, 64 bit x86 um, CPU there, not graphically embedded, but a tremendous amount of throughput option there. Now, it also arrives with a minimum eight gig of DDR4 memory, which can be upgraded up to a staggering 64 gig memory configuration. That is beefy in the extreme. Now, if we remove the accessory box there, we have a look at the device you can see there that this NAS has a number of the key features that we've seen before in NAS so first and foremost we've got the LCD panel there surrounded by uh, all manner of cooling there all around it and that LCD panel's got controls there there's also two USB 3 ports there which although support a number of different accessories in this device those two USB 3 ports are largely kind of dedicated to storage that we'll talk about in a little while there's also two dedicated 5GBE connections there for network connectivity up to a potential link aggregated 10GBE and a couple of 1GBE ports as well to boot. All of those belong to the NAS side of things. That NAS also internally, might be easier to just remove the lid and show you, I'm going to remove it there. I've already removed the screws, luckily, because that would have taken even longer. If we have a look inside, the NAS side of things also has, the two, it's got those two memory slots and it's got the controller dedicated, that Atom. But inside we've also got two dedicated SATA ports there, 2.5 inch up to 15 mil, so SSDs or hard drives. But there's also two dedicated M2 NVMe bays here, not NVMe, standard SATA. And these SATA bays here allow you to install SSD media in there for raw storage or to be utilized as caching for the overall storage array. Again, sorry about the slip up on the M2 there. So, also at the base here, we have two PCIe slots, and those two PCIe slots there are PCIe Gen 3 times two, so a thousand uh, megabytes per second throughput to the main controller board, and you can utilize that for improved network interface cards. You can add the Wi-Fi 6 upgrade card, uh, that AC2600, um, um, the AX200. And then on top of that, there are other network interface and storage upgrades as well. Now, I keep coming back to that word storage because the storage on this device on the NAS side is quite important because if you are going to utilize NAS, specifically those VMs as well, 
two bays, even if you include the little M2s inside, that's another vast amount to play with, especially if you're going to take advantage of caching. So there's a range of JBOD and hardware RAID expansions from QNAP that all utilize USB. But just remember, you've only got two ports to play with. So if you want to use one of them for a UPS, you've already lost the connection. If you want to use one of those for a network adapter, you've already lost one. So bear in mind that this device, if you are going to think about how much storage you're going to add to it and bolt on, you've only got those two ports to play with by default. You can add more, but just bear that in mind. There's loads of cooling across this device, and a lot of that is to do with the switch side that we're going to talk about in a wee bit. But if we move to the front, now we can talk about the switch side. So again, this is a layer two managed switch, and we'll talk more about the software capabilities in a bit. But this switch arrives with, um, I believe, two, you know, 360 watts power through the device, and you have PoE++ ports here. So you have got um, four ports there that deliver 90 watts, and the rest of them, um, 12, arriving with 30 watts power throughput on them. There's a combination on the switch side of varying degrees of bandwidth support as well. We've got SFP here at the end that allows you to take advantage of 10 GBE across two ports. So again, potential 20 GBE throughput across those. On top of that, you've got 2.5 GBE ports as well, not just the fives for the NAS, but 2.5 GBE on a managed network switch here. That on its own is very, very impressive. And of course, we have one GBE ports there with all of this providing power over ethernet to varying degrees there across the two of them. Now, bear in mind, PoE isn't just for cameras. It can be used for speakers. It can be used for alarm systems. There's actually a wide range of um, IP powered devices that allow you to deploy a lot of hardware without worrying about mains and data connection and solidifying them to that same thing. Now, you can feed a whole bunch of cameras into this and then use the NAS side with the likes of QVR Pro to get your incredible surveillance system up and running. And QVR Pro at the moment arrived with more licenses than any other um, NAS-based surveillance platform, and this is definitely something to behold in this. Now, that switch, as mentioned, runs parallel to the NAS. So it runs with QUNet switch, but with the combination of all the applications that are available on the NAS side of things, such as QWAN, such as a lot of the network control and wireless AP protocol of I mean, attaching those cards to go in there. There's a huge amount of collaboration between the two sides when it's needed. On top of that, virtual machine access is a great deal better on this than a number of devices. Not only because of that eight core CPU inside, allowing you to run Ubuntu and Windows VMs that can be downloaded in three clicks within the software user interface of QTS. But on the switch side with Q QNet switch, you can run OS's and VMs in there. And again, they do talk a big, big game about the number of the VMs that you can run on this, running in conjunction across both devices. And again, you can access the switch user interface via the NAS side if you so choose. So don't think it's two separate doors and that's all you've got. You can merge them into a single portal access point through the NAS. And again, whether you're gonna use QWAN, QNet switch, wireless AP or any of those protocols within this device and create a very bespoke secure network, it's all possible. The network managed side, again, I say layer two, you are talking priority management, quality, quality of service control, loop protection, um, link aggregation, all of those features, along with the security one would expect from an enterprise switch is in this. Now, this is a hardware review. We're not gonna go too deep into that software. We've done a full software overview already on the 1600P. So do check that out. There's been a few updates on that since then. So we are hoping to get the software overview done on this pretty soon. Um, the only, if I had to critique this device, and of course I will, one, I'm not overly happy with the storage choices that are inside it. I'm not 100% behind that whole two SATA. I don't know if you guys noticed, there's something called the QGD3014 coming out soon. And that focuses way more on the NAS storage side. And I think that's something that might be missing on this. I think the two PCIe slots, I think you could have foregone one of those in the chipset and used that for storage. And I think the idea of two CPUs is a little confusing for some people. And I think that 1500 quid price tag may put some people off. But these are all generally quite small concerns in something that I genuinely like 
as a solution. A number of you do think it's putting all your eggs in one basket, and I do get that point of view, and there is merit to it, I guess, in some ways. But having a network managed switch that's PoE and layer two in conjunction with the NAS lowers latency between them in a number of ways and lets you create a very unique um, system in your business. Add to that the ability to, you know, the likes of UPSs to keep things running, or the fact that this system allows you to parallel, shut them down, update firmware independently of each other has to be recommended within that single system. Without that, I would be totally on your side if you can't separate their two operational power up, power downs. That I'd have a problem with. And of course, I think maybe a redundant power supply option would have been a good idea too. But there you have it. That is the 1602 P from QNAP. We're going to a lot more detail in the links in the description where I will tell you guys more about the software side of things and hopefully update that in the very near future with our testing of this device and all those lovely network ports. If you do want to learn more about this device, do visit QNAP and of course visit the guys at span.com, the data storage experts, free pre and post sales tech support as well as very effective cost delivery that isn't going to break the bank. Yes, it is a plug. Yes, I'm saying that on their behalf, but it doesn't mean it's not true. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more and I will see you next time.